everything for me is is constantly changing. It's it's constantly evolving. The inspiration. It's like one of those things. As an artist, you grow up, and the world is very intense because you're sensitive and. Your, what I found to be later in life inspiration was something that was a little too heavy for someone who was younger to deal with. Um, you feel things differently and when you're older you get to realize that you can you see things, maybe brighter colors, taste things more vividly, whatever it might be. One of the fundamental things um, about my work, if you look at it all, it's about the relationship between men and women and the power struggles that go on between them. Um, especially the seduction, seductive qualities of a female. America was going through this very uh, traditional, um, conventional uh, gender role system where women were meant to stay home and take care of the kids, and the male was out working. And then you had Bordeaux over in Europe, Paris, and Central Pay for that matter, come up and kind of shift the roles. She used her seductive qualities to gain power over, over a man. So she came on the scene and in many ways she broke down the door for, for women to kind of own their sexuality and be liberated in that way. And I think this all led to the sexual revolution over time. When you look at it, it kind of all went that way. So women owning themselves, having a voice, and the power of a woman to me is a, is a big thing. I've been collecting vintage erotica from both Europe and America from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, and noticed this kind of um, polarizing uh, dialogue that was unfolding. I never knew what exactly to do with the magazines, and I always felt like they were just a source of inspiration, but now I'm actually incorporating it in the work. Um, I think it's an important uh, element of the work. I mean, it really does showcase a lot of what was going on in certain times. I mean, this is a Marilyn Monroe cover, but a lot of them are a little bit less uh, about celebrities you know. It's just about these pinup girls, and this was all taboo stuff. And you kind of get into this time warp. You know, there could be ways of hypnotizing women in the back. I mean, you gotta see some of this stuff. Have muscles, and I mean, it's just playing through this kind of caveman. I mean, how dumb were men in many ways? And just the paper, the feel of it, it's just beautiful stuff. So in many ways, I'm trying to capture a moment in time in the work. I think it's important to look at the past, see where we're going. You know, people think that evolution is something that happened in the past, but it's something that's happening right now. You know, we gotta be the change that we want to be. When I first launched this series, I really wanted it to have a reflective quality, to engage the viewer in the work by looking at themselves. What ended up happening is something I was never going to, I could never imagine it would happen to this magnitude, which was the amount of selfies that were taken in the work. Essentially, they're mirrors. They're, it's stainless steel polished to a mirror finish. So, yes, yeah, so it was intentional for the viewer to look at themselves and kind of have a reflective experience and see where am I evolving to? Um, what am I? Where do I stand in the world? Shh. My name is Jeremy Penn. I'm an artist from Brooklyn, New York, and you are watching Quiet Lunch.